Okay, so now we're ready to work on the sphere. I'm actually gonna move my paper a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. I don't know if you can see the sphere as it is right now, the circle with the, it's very, very light. I don't know if you can see that, maybe a little bit. Um, but I've got it on the paper, it's very, very light, so you don't have to redraw it to get it placed there. But you are ultimately going to create the shaded sphere on this paper. Okay, so look back at your techniques. Which one did you like best? Which one did you enjoy doing the most? Which do you think makes the best looking shading for you? And then on your sphere, I recommend actually starting with the cast shadow. I'm gonna go ahead and label that my cast shadow. I do want you to label it okay, cast shadow. I like to start right up against the sphere on the cast shadow and I'm gonna do cross hatching and I'm gonna start darkest right up next to the sphere because I can fade out away from there. And I'm relatively close to staying within my, my little ellipse there. But I'm gonna get really dark right up next to it because that's where it's gonna be the darkest, right up next to that sphere. I know some of you had some struggles on the pencil shaded one. That's why I went ahead and and drew that for you through the magic of the computer. Okay, so I'm fading that out, staying within that ellipse for the most part, but I wanna shade that so that it gradually comes out there. Because other light sources will be able to kind of start adding some value into that. Some, some lighter values, I should say. Really nice and dark up against there. Okay. Once you've got your cast shadow, then you're going to move on to the sphere. So I'm going to kind of start, I need to keep in mind that my darkest is going to be this crescent down here, but I've got to make sure that I keep my reflected light, oops, reflected light. I want to keep that lighter. So I'm going to start out with my darkest and bring that crescent in, start getting some of that in. I'm going to kind of map in my shadow, my attached shadow first, and I'll keep layering in there. Again, you can do this with ballpoint pen. You can do this with your ultra fine Sharpie. You can't do it with the ballpoint pen if you decide, well, I don't recommend that you do this. If you're doing stippling, the ballpoint pen is not going to work as well. Okay, so I need to bring a, a few more marks down into, my reflected light is probably not bright white, but it's not gonna be very dark. My highlight, where the light is coming in my, from my light source, that's going to be my highlight. Okay. And I just keep bringing in more and more of those marks to create my darks. Again, I've got to keep in mind where my outline is. Ideally, I should barely see that when I'm finished, just like with my pencil shading. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit so this video isn't too long. So I'm gonna still bring that in a little bit more. bring up a little bit more dark up closer to my highlight. I'm not outlining my highlight. I saw a few of you do that on your pencil um, sphere. Don't do that. The deepest core of my attached shadow. So that's my attached oops, shadow. That will be almost black, almost solid. So that when you're squinting, it starts to really show that um, that form. So this one's a little bit more finished. So there's that. All right, so yours should look very similar 
except this should be completed. And again, it's up to you which media you want to use, ballpoint pen or Sharpie, except on uh, the stippling, you almost have to use the ultra fine Sharpie for the stippling. And I think that's it. Thanks.